Hello everyone. Welcome to the Third Benches YouTube channel. Today we will discuss on CSIR Life Sciences December 2015 Part A questions from questions 1 to 6. First question. In each of the following groups of words is a hidden number based on which you should arrange them in descending order. Pick the correct one. So here is there is a hidden number in each of these words and we should arrange them in descending order which means the largest and then the second largest and so on and so forth and then the smallest is the correct order for arranging so here papers i xeroxed so here we see that six is present this is six next is wi-fi veteran here we see five is present five and then yourself ourselves here we see four is present and breaks seven here we see seven is present so we see that the order for descending order arranging arrangement is seven six five and four seven six five and four which is h e f and g so among these options, H, E, F, G, fourth is the correct option. So answer four is the correct option. Next, in this question, this is the given diagram. The number of squares in the given figure is 30, 29, 25 or 20. So let's first go about with the individual squares that are present in the structure. We see 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19 and 20. So, single squares equal to 20. Right? Now, what can be the other formations of square? So, if this is going to be one square, adding three more squares to this can also be this, so if this is a and this is a now this is this will this entire structure will be 2a and 2a similarly by scaling up the next similar square structure will be which would be 1 2 3 4 5 6 7 8 and 9 so here we see that a a a 3 a is the entire length of the of one side and the other side as well so this is going to be the next square structure so here we have single squares to be 20 now we don't see this kind of a formation here so we are only limited by these four square formations so how many of these four squares are remaining is what we are going to capture uh, calculate next so here we see this is one square correct so this is one square these four together will make one square Again, similarly, these four will make one more square. These four will make one more square. These four will make one more square. And the center four will make one more square. So, squares, four squares equal to five. Next, can there be any more four, four square formations? We see that here, this part is also a four square formation so this can be one more this can be one more similarly this can be one more and this can be one more so he, we see four more new square formations so this would be five plus four do we see any more formations no so the total square formation is two squares is 20 plus 5 plus 4 which is 29 so option 2 is the correct option next question a shopkeeper purchases a product for 100 rupees and sells it making a profit of 10 percent the customer resells it to the same shopkeeper incurring a loss of 10 percent in these dealings the shopkeeper makes what amount is there going to be no profit or no loss or is, going, is it going to be 11, 1 or 20? Okay. So here, for shopkeeper, the cost price, he, he purchases the product at 100 rupees and sells it making a profit of 
ten percent. So he sells it with hundred plus ten percent of hundred. Correct, which is going to be hundred plus ten, which is one ten. So he sells it to the customer at one ten rupees. Now the customer's cost price is one ten. The customer buys it at one ten rupees and sells it to the same shopkeeper, incurring a loss of ten percent. So when selling it, he is incurring a loss, which means one. And one ten into, which means, which means one ten. So the selling price for customer is one ten minus ten percent of the co selling uh, cost price. Which means he is selling it at one ten minus the ten uh, percent of cost price. So because he is incurring a loss of ten percent. So this is going to be. One ten minus eleven rupees, which is ninety nine. So, in these dealings, the shopkeeper makes what amount? So, for the shopkeeper, he sells the product at one ten rupees and purchases it back at ninety nine rupees. So, the gain that he makes is eleven rupees. So, option two is the correct option. Five congruent rectangles are drawn inside a big rectangle of perimeter one sixty five as shown. What is the per perimeter of one of the five rectangles? Okay, so here the key is there are five congruent rectangles, which means for each of the five rectangles, the length and breadth are going to be same. So here we we given that for the big rectangle, the perimeter is one sixty five. So here, let this be the breadth and this be the length. So breadth and length of the big rectangle. Two into L plus B, the big rectangle, which is perimeter is one sixty five. Now for each of these five congruent rectangles, let B be B dash and L dash be the length. So here, each of these rectangles will have B dash and L dash. So we have to find what is the perimeter of the of one of the five rectangles. So, assuming so we need to find what is two into L dash plus B dash, correct? So here we see that. So this is going to be B dash, B dash, B dash. This is going to be L dash. So we see three B dash equal to two L dash, right? And the rectangle's perimeter can be calculated as two into this is going to be L dash and B dash. So two into length three B dash plus breadth. L dash plus B dash is equal to what is what we are going to find. So two into again three B dash plus L dash plus B dash is equal to two into four B dash plus L dash. Okay. I'm sorry. Here, this two into L plus B is what we are representing as three B dash and L plus B dash. So this is going to be one sixty five. Okay. So here, two into four B dash plus L dash is equal to one sixty five. Now replacing L dash with three B dash, three by two B dash. So equal to two into four B dash plus three by two B dash equal to one sixty five. All right. So eight. So two into Eight B dash plus three B dash equal to one sixty five. So this is going to be eight nine ten nineteen eleven. So it's going to be eleven B dash equal to one sixty five. So B dash is going is equal to fifteen. Now if B dash is fifteen. L dash is going to be three by two B dash. 
which is forty five by two, which is twenty two point five. So what we are going to find now is this two into L dash plus B dash, which is equal to two into twenty two point five plus fifty. Which is two into thirty-seven point five, which is seventy-five. So, option two is the correct option. A person walks downhill at ten kilometer per hour, uphill at six kilometer per hour, and on the plain at seven point five kilometer per hour. If the person takes three hours to grow, go from place A to another place B, and one hour. On the way from B to A, the distance between A and B is fifteen twenty three point five sixteen, or data insufficient. All right. So here we are given the following information: speed down downhill is ten kilometer per hour. Speed uphill is going to be six kilometer per hour. Speed at the plane is going to be seven point five kilometer per hour, and we are given two distances, A and B. It's given that if the person takes three hours to go from A to another place B, so this is going to take three hours, and one hour on the way from B to A, and this is going to take one hour. So it is evident that A is Somewhere here, and B is somewhere at the top, because it takes a longer time to travel uphill and a shorter time to travel downhill. Okay, so here instead of a straight line, let's have it as a a region, a region with an uphill part and a plain part, right? So here, let this distance be A. And this distance B B. So here, let this distance be A, and this distance be B. We need to find the distance between A and B, which is we need to find what A plus B is, right? Yes, so here uh, we are given time. We know the velocity. We need to find the distance. So speed is distance by time. We are given time, so we will equate it with time. Time is distance by speed. So from A to B, we are taking. So A to B is going to be an uphill task. So to cover A, we need to travel. Six kilometers per hour, and to cover B, we travel at seven point five, and the total time taken is three hours. So, uh, taking the common LCM, we get five A plus four B is ninety. This is going to be our first equation. Next, from B to A. Okay. So here, the same distance that a person travels uphill. So when he is coming from B to A, B is going to be the plain area, and A is going to be the downhill portion. So to cover A, he travels at a speed of ten kilometer per hour, which is the downhill speed, plus B by seven point five as usual, the same speed at the plain. Now this is going to be one. So Taking the common LCM, we again get three A plus four B is thirty. Okay, so what we need to know is the common, the total distance A and B, right? So here, if I add both these values, four B plus four B, five A plus three A, and ninety and thirty, if I add these values, I get eight A plus eight B. Is one twenty, which gives eight into a plus b 
is 120 otherwise a plus b is going to be 15 kilometer right so of these a is the correct option it is 15 kilometers so that's the distance between a and b is 15 kilometers a vessel is partially filled with water more water is added to it at a rate directly proportional to time that is dv by dt is directly proportional to t which of the following graphs depict correctly the variation of total volume of water with time all right so here we are given with two information one the vessel is already partially filled with water and two they are varying at the rate of dv by dt proportional to t right so here let's first solve this equation dv by dt let's assume is equal to t so next dv equal to t dt integrating on both sides we get v equal to t square by 2 right so here if let's just put a box and see the different values possible for v and t okay so when t is going to be 0 v is going to be 0 according to this equation when t is going to be 1 v is going to be 1 when t is going to be 2 v is going to be 4 4 by 2 which is again 2 when v is going to be 3 it's going to be 9 by 2 when v t is going to be 4 it's going to be 8 and so on and so forth right so here we see that it is not a linear equation but rather a gradual progression so it could be either 2 or 4 okay so these two options are incorrect so we've eliminated these two options so among these options which could be the correct option now we have to go to this part the vessel is partially filled with water so initially there is some amount of water so before starting this process itself there is some amount of water present in the vessel so at time t equal to zero there is going to be some existing volume of water present in the vessel so it is not going to start at origin but at a different point right so option two is a correct option thank you